good morning everyone welcome to the class today we will be talking something about royal ballet of cambodia dance is a greatly revered and is a popular art form in cambodia many famous actresses in cambodia got their start as dancers the current king is a former dancer in cambodia's villages plays performed by actors wearing masks are popular shadow plays performed using black leather puppets that enact scenes from the rame kran are also enjoyed folk dancing is popular is ruler cambodia and is performed spontaneously to a drum beat dance music and theater are interrelated and closely linked with cambodian royalty and history inscriptions from the 7th century show that dancers were given to the kings in temples as offerings the dance the temples at angkor are filled with images of dancers according to khmer mythology cambodia was created by a union between a king and a heavenly dancer there are four main types of cambodian dance folk dancing associated with original inhabitants of the region second the sacred dances which are linked with hinduism and buddhism third classical dances traditionally performed for the cambodia court and fourth modern dance and hall dances pure dance is often referred to as robam ancient dance as robam moram dance dramas as lakhon and the classical dance of today as lakhon kebach beron the best preserved and most well known of them is the west is the classical tradition which has been closely connected to the court for centuries classical dance has been revived by but village folk dancing is dying out it is a form of performing arts established in the royal courts of cambodia for the purpose of entertainment as well as ceremonial proprietations it is the dominant genre of dance theater in cambodia that features the classical dance style and is analogous to thai dance theater of the inner court the lakho nai it is performed during public occasions and ceremonies in cambodia as well as among cambodians in other countries etymology western names for this dance tra tradition often make reference to the royal court including cambodian court dance as it was performed and maintained by the attendants of the royal palaces as a performing art it is formally referred to as the royal ballet of cambodia and as le ballet royal du cambodge in france by unesco cravet brandon and others in the academic field although this term may also refer to the royal ballet as a corps the national dance company of cambodia the term khmer classical dance is also used alongside royal ballet of cambodia in the publications by unesco and mentioned authors in khmer it is formally known as robam preach reach trop dances of royal wealth it is also referred to as lakhon lyong the king's theater during the lone nol regime of cambodia the dance tradition was referred to as lakhon kebach boran khmer khmer theater of the ancient style a term emanating it from its royal legacy khmer classical dancers as a whole are frequently referred to as apsras dancers by laymen in the modern sense this usage would be incorrect in the present form of the dance as the apsra is just one type of character among others in the repertory regardless the romanticized affiliation of royal ballet of cambodia with the apsras and devatas of the ruins of angkor still persist history of khmer dance over the centuries khmer dancing lent its influence to the classical ballet of neighboring countries and some of its postures and movements are similar to other southeast asian dance forms according to the princess bupha devi 
The Khmer kingdom started its tradition in the 8th century, 500 years before Thailand. In 1400, with the sacking of Angkor Empire, the Apsara dancers were seized and taken to Thailand. According to Dr. Jukko O. Mietin of the Theatre Academy, Helsinki, the roots of Cambodian dance and theatre are believed to lie in ancient indigenous rituals such as funerary ceremonies or rites connected animistic or ancestor worship. Early documentary sources clearly indicate strong Indian influences. One such source is a 6th century inscription describing arrangements for the daily recitation of holy texts of Indian origin, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata and the Purana texts. They were adopted from India together with the Sanskrit language and Hindu Brahmanism in its Shaivistic form. The golden age of Cambodian history was the Angkorian period from AD 802 to 1431 when splendid temples and cities such as the magnificent Angkor Wat were built and Khmer dance achieved the status of a kind of state art. After the contest of Angkor by the Thais in 1431, Theravada Buddhism and the art styles of the Thai kingdom of Ayutthaya came to shape the culture of Cambodia. As in Thailand, a localized version of the originally Indian epic Ramayana was rewritten in the 16th or 17th century and it became country's national epic known as the Remkar. Thai dance technique and its repertory were also adopted in Cambodia during the long period of Thai domination which had already started in the 14th century and ended in 1907 when the Thais returned the province of Sem Reap where Angkor is located to the Cambodians. Dance masters from the Thai court are known to have trained the Cambodian royal ballet even during the period of Ram Van and the cooperation of the Cambodian and Thailand's national dance companies still continues today. In 1863, Cambodia became one of the French protectorates and thus the European, particularly the French influence, started to spread rapidly with the urban surroundings and also influenced the development of theatre and dance. After the declaration of independence in 1953, an intensive search for the nation's roots started. Freedom from centuries of foreign dominance, first Thai and then French, inspired a movement that is often called Khmerization. The origin of the nation's history was founded in the glorious Khmer culture of the Angkorian period which served and still serves as a source of inspiration for theatre and dance as well. The end of the 1960s was the beginning of a period of three decades of war and political turmoil. First the Vietnam War and then the rule of the Khmer Rouge which lasted until 1991 killed millions of Cambodians and destroyed the country's infrastructure. Cambodian scholars such as Pak Tum Kravel and French scholar Georges Grosselier have claimed Khmer classical dance as a tradition maintained since the Angkor period. Other scholars theorize that Khmer classical dance as seen today developed from or was at least highly influenced by Siamese classical dance innovations during the 19th century and precedent forms of Cambodian dance were different from the present form. According to James R. Brandon, the Lakhon Nai of Siam was the main influence on Cambodian court dance in the 1800s. Martin Benham also mentions performers from Thailand were brought to restructure the dance tradition for the royal court of Cambodia during the same period. In it, there were Siamese performers in the royal court of Cambodia during the 19th century, according to most renowned sources of the royal ballet, 
Grosslier included, this suggests a strong connection to the court dances of Siam and its influences. Siamese taught Cambodia its lost art form which had preserved after sacking Angkor. However, Sasagawa notes that the Siamese innovations were not present in the Angkorian dance tradition. Angkor and pre-Angkor era One of the earliest periods of dance in Cambodia is from the 7th century where performances were used as a funeral rite for kings. In the 20th century, the use of dancers is also attested in funerary processions such as that for King Sisovat Monivong. During the Angkor period, dance was ritually performed at temples. The temple dancers came to be considered as apsras who served as entertainers and messengers to divinities. The tradition of temple dancers declined during the 15th century as the Siamese kingdom of Ayutthaya raided Angkor. When Angkor fell, its artisans, brahmins and dancers were taken captive to Ayutthaya. Post Angkor era, in the 19th century, King Ang Dyong, who had spent 27 years as a captive prince in the Siamese court in Bangkok, restructured his royal court in Cambodia with Siamese innovations from the Ratanakosin period. Court dancers under the patronage of the royal court of Siam were sent to the royal court in Cambodia during this period. French colonial era Dancers of the courts of King Sisovat were exhibited at the 1906 colonial exposition in Marseilles at the suggestion of Georges Bios, a French representative in the Cambodian court. Auguste Rodin was captivated by the Cambodian dancers and painted a series of watercolors of the dancers. George Grosslier, the French colonial director of Nom Fen Musi Sarout, today the National Museum, had reinvented large parts of the ballet through his studies of the bas reliefs of Angkor Wat. Post independence Cambodia, Queen Sisovat. Kosemak became a patron of the Royal Com Ballet of Cambodia. Under the Queen's guidance, several reforms were made to the Royal Ballet, including choreography. Dance dramas were dramatically shortened from all night spectacles to about one hour length. Prince Norodom Shihanok featured the dances of the Royal Ballet in his films. The dance tradition received a Detriment during the Khmer Ro regime, during which many dancers were put to death in the genius side. Although 90% of all Cambodian classical artists perished between 1975 and 1979 after the fall of the Khmer Roj, those who did survive wandered out for hiding found one another and formed colonies in order to revive their sacred traditions. Khmer classical dance training was resurrected in the refugee camps in eastern Thailand with the few surviving Khmer dancers. Many dances and dance dramas were also recreated at the Royal University of Fine Arts in Cambodia. In 2003, it was inducted into the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage List. Khmer Dance and Theatre in Angkor There exist thousands of dance-related sculptures and reliefs from Angkor period. Together with stone inscriptions, they give us information about dance and theatre in the Khmer civilization. They at least make clear how important an element dance was in the Khmer culture, especially in temple ritual. The civilization of Angkor has dance related inscriptions starting from the period of the early kingdom of Chenla, which existed from the 6th to the 9th centuries until civilization reached its apogee during the rule of Jayaraman VII. An early Chenla inscription mentions a rather modest number of 17 dancers among gifts given to a temple. However, it is notable that even during the Chenla period, the existence of male dancers is referred to. It seems that following Indian practice, 
employing girls as temple dancers was regarded as a form of merit gaining in Khmer society. By the time of the rule of Jairaman VII, the dance groups had grown in size. The inscriptions gave valuable information about the social status of the dancers. The sculptures and reliefs give several kinds of information about Khmer dance. The most common images are those of the hundreds of figures of dancing girls, which are either shown dancing alone in a group of two or three or in a row formation. Traditionally, these figures are automatically labeled apsaras, the mythical heavenly dancers of Hindu Buddhist mythology. Their turned out leg position with its many variations is the most dominant Indian influenced feature in the dance images in Southeast Asia from approximately the 8th century onwards. In Khmer dance images, however, both the supporting and the raised leg are strongly bent, which often results in an exceptionally low position. Most of the dancing apsras convey an impression of dynamic movement since keeping one's balance in this position for a longer time seems nearly impossible. The torso is often stiff and erect, sometimes slightly sideways bent. The most dominant movements are those of the arms and hands. In fact, most of the elements of body and hand movements can be analyzed according to the Sanskrit terms established in the Natya Shastra. However, there does not seem to be direct influence anymore. The lowness of the position gives the movement and the unmistakable Khmer flavor. Above all, the strongly backward bent figures which are still a common feature in Southeast Asian dance today regularly appear among the otherwise often Indian influenced Khmer hand movements. Besides these female dancers, the Khmer dance imaginary includes hundreds of portrayals of other kinds of dances too, such as processional war dances, training of martial arts, relaxed social dancing and even acrobatic circus entertainment. A wide range of dance related poses can be found in the narrative relief panels of Angkor Wat. Although these positions are clearly also localized in Khmer reliefs, many of them however stem from the Indian tradition where several fixed positions indicating the use of archery were categorized. The narrative reliefs often also depict stylized sitting and riding poses which can still be seen employed in classical dance dramas both in Cambodia and neighboring Thailand. There is a supported fact that at least at the court of Pagan and at the Thai courts of Ayutthaya and Bangkok as well as in East Java, the Indra Physika ritual pantomime enacting the myth of the churning of the milky ocean was regularly performed during the coronation ceremonies. The large scale mythological dance dramas were performed by male actor dancers would explain the contradiction between the Khmer inscriptions and the imaginary which only rarely shows any male dancers. This is supported by the fact that at the Thai courts of Ayutthaya and Bangkok, the inheritors of the Khmer legacy, the large scale dance drama, Khon, enacting scenes from the localized Ramayana, were originally performed by male dancers only. Indeed, when one compares the dance related information provided by the reliefs of Angkor, with still living dance traditions, it is exactly the Thai Khon and its sister form, the Lakhon Khol of Cambodia. Thai influences on Khmer dance and theatre after Angkor, the heyday of Khmer culture came to an end in 1431 when the Thais conquered Angkor and Khmer court for the second time and also possibly its artists were captured and taken to the Thai capital of Ayutthaya. The conquerors greatly valued the dance and theatre traditions as well as other aspects of the Khmer culture. Over the centuries, Khmer traditions were adopted to the Thai taste and Thai spirit. The ritual was what is known today as the classical central Thai culture with its various forms of theatre and dance. 
The transplanting of the Thai tradition was in many ways a total process and in the 19th century for example, two complete dance troops were sent from the Thai court to the Khmer court. Until World War II, the Royal Cambodian Ballet performed its classical repertory of today bears strong Thai influences. The grand scale dance drama Lakhon Khol is basically a Khmer version of the Thai Khon, a masked pantomime depicting scenes from the Ramayana. Nang Shak Tom or large hides is one of the two types of Cambodian shadow theatre. Despite some differences in the style of the puppets, it is closely related to the ancient Nyang Gyei shadow theatre of Thailand. Similarly, the forms of Cambodian dance dramas called Riyong or Lakhon were in turn strongly influenced by Lakhon dance drama of Thailand. A well-known saying is that if one is seeking the remnants of ancient Khmer culture, one should look at Thailand but while seeking traces of the Thai culture of the Ayutthaya period, one should look at Cambodia. The kingdom of Ayutthaya adopted several cultural elements from the Khmers including court rituals, the concept of the god king and possibly also the traditions of court dance and dance drama. Cambodia on the other hand was annexed to Thailand and the culture of Ayutthaya formed the basis of Cambodian Buddhist art as well as court arts. Cambodian dance and the Khmer Raj. Most cultural institutions were destroyed by the Khmer Raj. Many dancers and musicians were executed. The Khmer Raj believed that the classical dance was one of the most descendant of Cambodian arts. Most of the nation's best dancers were killed or died from starvation or disease. Before the rise of the Khmer Raj, there were about 30 troops performing Lakhon Kol, the integrate masked all male sacred form that boosted 4000 gestures in its movement vocabulary. It was a tradition that existed exclusively in the minds and muscles of the masters who practiced it and thus was almost entirely obliterated during the Pol Pot genocide. After the regime fell, the government launched a nationwide ratio campaign to unearth surviving masters of the coal. According to UNESCO, the Royal Ballet practically ceased to exist under the repressive rule of the Khmer Raj, who eliminated almost all master dancers and musicians. Immediately after Pol Pot's defeat in 1979, dance troops re-emerged and performances of the ancient repertory resumed. The ballet has regained much of its former splendor but still faces numerous difficulties such as lack of funding and suitable performance spaces, competition from modern media and the risk of becoming a mere tourist attraction. Literature a testimony of the antiquity of the Khmer language are the multitude of epigraphic inscriptions on stone. The first written proof that has allowed the history of the Khmer kingdom to be reconstructed as those inscriptions. These writings on columns, stalactites, and walls through lights on the royal lineages, religious edicts, territorial conquests and internal organizations of the kingdom. Following the stone inscription, some of the oldest Khmer documents are translations and commentaries of the Pali Buddhist text of the Tripataka. They were written by the monks on palmyar palm leaves and kept in various monasteries throughout the country. The Rianmekar is the Cambodian version of the Ramayan, the famous Indian epic. The Remkar is composed in rammed verses and is staged in sections that are adapted to dance movements interrupted by Khmer artists. The Remkar is the most ambitious form of traditional Cambodian theatre. Cambodia had a rich and very traditional oral literature. There are many legends, tales and songs of very ancient origin that were not put into writing until the arrival of the Europeans. 
One of the most representative of these tales was the story Vorvon Grand Sauron, a long story about two Khmer princes that was first put into writing by Auguste Pavy. In 2006, the Vorvong and Sorvong story was enacted in dance form by the Royal Ballet of Cambodia. Tum Thwe, which has been compared to Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, is probably the most well-known indigenous story based on Ta poem first written by a Khmer Mon named Sam. A tragic love story set during the Lovak era, it has been told throughout Cambodia since at least the middle of the 19th century. The story has been portrayed in many forms including oral, historical, literary, theatre and film adaptions. Some talented members of Khmer royalty such as King Ang Dyong and King Tomeracha too have produced lasting works of literature as well. Prophilic King Ang Dyong is most famous for his novel Kake inspired from a Jataka tale about an unfaithful woman. Shadow Theatre, it comes in two forms, Sebek Thom, which is the big puppets that are actually panels depicting certain characters from the story and second Sebek Tut, small articulated puppets. The black leather puppets are held in front of light source either in front or behind the screen creating a shadow or salutary effect. Sebek Thom is the most uniquely Cambodian, more formal of the two types, restricting itself to stories from the Riemkar. The performance is accompanied by a pin piet orchestra and narration and the puppeteers end silent, moving the panels with dance-like movements. Sebek Tut has a far lighter feel presenting popular stories of heroes, adventures, love and battles with or without orchestra and with the puppeteers often doing the narration. Most dance performances and Siem Rip offer a mixture of classical and theatrical folk dances. A few venues offer shadow theatre. Nang Spek or Lakhon Nang Spek is closely related to the Nang Yai of Thailand. Wayang and Indonesia like the islands of Java and Bali, thus implying the Nang Spak may have an Indonesian origin many centuries ago. Nang Spak is also a dying art form and may disappear because of the decline in popularity due to the introduction of modern entertainment. There are three kinds of sh shadow theatre Cambodia. Nang Spak Thom is an art that involves mime song music as well as dance and narration to the accompaniment of the pin piet orchestra. It most often features the remkar. Nang spak torch also called Nang kalun and sometimes called yang uses smaller puppets and a wide range of stories. Spak pure used colored leather puppets. Modern dance in Cambodia Despite the great royal dance troupe's success at the Marshallis Colonial Exhibition in 1906, Dane and dance drama declined in the early 20th century. A revival started during the 1940s. Prince Shihanok, later King Prime Minister and the Head of State, employed the royal dancers as cultural ambassadors during his visits abroad as well as during the state celebrations. Shihanok is a great admirer of both Cambodian and French culture. New dances, mainly non-dramatic pure dances, were created in the 1940s while the traditional Dane dramas were often shortened to suit westernized tastes. In 1962, Shihanok gave the royal dance troupe the status of a national institution and it got its own theatre building some years later. After the declaration of independence in 1953, an intensive search for the nation's roots started. Freedom from centuries of foreign dominance 
first Thai and then French inspired a movement that is often called Khmerization. The origin of the nation's history was found in the glorious Khmer culture of the Angyorian period. Mm.